Well, hello everyone. My name is Alison Woodall and I'm a relocation specialist. That means I get to help you with the financial, logistical and emotional issues that make moving to a new state so stressful. And today I am talking to Ryan Drain and he's a partner at Momentum Group Consulting. And we are gonna be talking all about how you can start a business or transfer your business when you leave California. Ryan, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Alison. Well, before we start talking about all the business stuff, I would love to know a little bit about where you are in Kentucky, because there are so many people in these Facebook groups who are maybe thinking of Tennessee, but you're right next door in Kentucky, and it is just as beautiful. So what do you love most? Absolutely. Well, the one thing that I love the most here are the people, it, it, just amazing people um, that are here. Um, I actually only live about 20 minutes from Tennessee. so. Um, a lot of the things that you find and you learn about Tennessee, you will also find those in Kentucky. Uh, Tennessee and Kentucky are kind of sister states. So um, a lot of the Southern charm, a lot of those type of things, the logistical advantages um, that you find in Tennessee, you'll also find those in Kentucky. So, um, but I actually live in my offices in West Kentucky. Um, close to the Mississippi River, actually. So um, we're located within a three hour drive of Louisville, Nashville, Memphis, and St. Louis. So very centrally located to a lot of metropolitan areas in this part of the country. Wow. And, and presumably the same kind of weather because Californians are always worried about the weather. No, I, I don't think about Kentucky as extreme weather. You get your four seasons, it's nice and warm in summer, but not like crazy humid. And then maybe a bit of snow in winter, but not, not too crazy. That's right. That's right. That is one of the great things that we really tout about Kentucky as well is that we do experience all four seasons. Um, you're not going to have, you know, three months of extreme 100 degree heat in the summer. Um, you're not going to be shut down for two or three months in the winter uh, with um, high accumulating snowfalls. So um, it's beautiful. And, and as of right now, the trees are changing colors, beautiful leaves. Uh, right now, it's just a great time to take a drive out of, out of two lane road and, um, you know, see all the beautiful sights the state has to offer. Well, wonderful. Well, I love Kentucky, so you don't have to sell me on Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what I would love to talk to you about today is business, because there are a lot of people who see California um, as an opportunity to start their own business or maybe go self-employed. But then there may also be business people who own a business in California who want to leave but just the logistics and the, the amount of things they have to consider moving, you know, a bigger business seems overwhelming. So I would love to start off um, with someone who maybe is self-employed or, um, or who would like to go self-employed or maybe is currently self-employed and wants to move to a new state um, and maybe stay just self-employed as, as one person or maybe, you know, a very small company with just a couple of employees. How, what, what's the first thing you need to do when you start a business in a new state? I think one of the first and one of the main resources is actually the Secretary of State of most states um, offers an online website for starting up or relocating your business. So whether you're looking at Texas, Tennessee, Kentucky, if you go to the Secretary of State website for that particular state, they'll actually have an entire section dedicated to starting or relocating a business within that state. So uh, Kentucky actually has one, it's, it's onestop.ky.gov. And if you go there, there's a big tab at the very top of the page, very easy to find, it says start a business in Kentucky. And it walks you down through all those steps. And the Secretary of State, um, in all the states that, especially in the Southeast, we're really focused. Um, their office is a great resource. You can contact them, reach out to them. Uh, some of them do a little bit of business planning to help you out with the transition, just to make it easier and less stressful. Um, another site that I'd recommend um, on the federal side is obviously irs.gov. And you can go to irs.gov backslash businesses and it talks about uh, setting up, obtaining an EIN, uh, employee identification number, so which would be on the federal side if you're looking at starting up your business. Plus, it also gives you some 
uh, resources and helps explain the different types of business structures. Uh, we, we discussed before, whether it be an LLC or S Corp or however, it, it really breaks that down and makes it a lot less intimidating, uh, provides you with some specific definitions as to what you can do and how that you know, specific designation might apply to your business and what advantages or disadvantages it might carry with it. Wow, so that's a great place to start because I know, you know, I mean, I only lived in California for 16 months, but I know my ex my husband's experience of just how hard it is to, you know, deal with all the business regulations. And, you know, if, you, if you're if wanting to go self-employed, it can seem overwhelming. So to know that there's those two resources out there just to kind of give you a guide is great. So, so say someone goes through all of those things and then they say, I want to move to Kentucky. And they've, you know, they've figured out the things that are online. What, what do they need to do when they get to Kentucky? Who are the kind of people that they need to be in place? Because when you when you move somewhere, it's you, you don't necessarily have contact. So what are those business professionals they would need to help them? Sure. I mean, specifically, some of the most important people, especially once you determine the city or community in which you want to live and work, um, you'll need to find a local attorney that specializes in business law. Um, and a lot of that can be done through some other resources, which I'll talk about here in a minute, but also a CPA. Uh, being new to a state, there are different state tax laws that go along with every state. So you wanna make sure that you at least sit down and meet with a CPA so they can do a consultation, um, give you their opinion on whether or not um, they may have some additional resources that you could find depending on the size of your business, um, to whether you can do your financials and then just work with them once a year, or whether that be a daily, weekly, monthly thing, uh, type of relationship they wanna build. Another thing that, that a lot of people don't think about um, is your bank or your lending institution. Um, you need to consider the area where you're moving um, if your current bank is located there. And if it's not, um, what banks, um, what services financially are offered in the community in which you're looking to move. So that's extremely important because as many people know, whenever you're looking to start a business or relocate a company, establishing those banking relationships and other professional relationships like CPAs, attorneys, those are all extremely integral pieces to your business's success. Um, just a couple of other things, and this is how you may be able to uh, find a good fit for an attorney or a CPA. I'd also reach out to the local chamber of commerce um, or other professional groups within your specific business um, category. You know, there are a lot of professional groups that meet weekly, monthly. You know, it could be the regional advertisers group or journalist group or you know just it, a lot of industry specific type things and networking those groups is not only critical in finding you know things out about your industry but they can also connect you with those attorneys cpas lenders that really understand your type of business mm -hmm. and i think that that is critical um, from a networking standpoint of being able to find resources but also from a networking standpoint to maybe be able to gain clients as well. Okay. And because, I mean, my experience is um, LinkedIn um, and there's, and Facebook obviously is, you know, Facebook, I always think is tends to be more kind of personal relationships, but there are a huge number of groups out there that are professional. And then I, I have great experiences with LinkedIn um, in terms of building professional networks. So it is just, you know, using friends, family, industry contacts, doing as much networking as you can, because, People are so open and friendly and welcoming in the South, particularly. But I mean, I think in any state, in if you create those bonds or those um, those relationships, people will try and help you. So, yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned LinkedIn is a, an excellent tool, and you can actually search by industry um, and by geographic location to find people that are in that field, you know, near or in that ge specific geographic location. So that is, it's a great tool, especially if you're just kind of wanting to, um, maybe if you have a short list of a few different communities or states that you're, you're interested in, 
LinkedIn is a good way to kind of dip your toe into it a little bit and, um, you know, have some conversations one-on-one -on -one with some of those professionals. Yeah, because people tend to think that you, LinkedIn is just about finding a job, but I, I don't think it is really. In my experience, it's no. all just been about networking um, and some of the connections I've made on LinkedIn. I've never spoken to them. I've never actually met them, but but um, it, I used to do like time management and consulting and the, the connections I made on there were so incredibly useful in that profession, less so <laughs> what I'm doing now. Well, <laughs> It really is an amazing resource. I mean, I used it when I was on the community economic development side to network, to talk to companies, I actually um, recruited a company to the community I was working at that point in time because of a relationship I developed on LinkedIn. So um, it is a great tool. And if you're not using it, I would seriously encourage you to use LinkedIn. Um, it is, it, it's, it's just a wonderful thing to have. And, and you're right, it allows you to be involved in those professional groups. And a lot of the, when I talk about the local chamber of commerce or those professional groups within that certain area, a lot of them will have, like you said, will have their own group pages. So you can kind of get on there and start reading to get more of a feel about the business community within that community that you're looking to relocate as well. Well, perfect. Okay, so anything else you want to add on a like a very small business or maybe someone who's self-employed? Do, do you think we've covered everything there? Yeah, I think I think just one thing I would encourage people is that you know starting up a business at any location um, it can be um, a little overwhelming at times. So don't be afraid to go out and utilize your resources. We just talked about a lot here. Um, there will be some included in the links and that that I can provide and just, you know, don't be afraid to reach out and, you, you know, there are people there that are willing to help. And if you're bringing a new business into a community, they're excited to help you. They want to help you. So that's what that's just the main thing that I'd walk away with is, you know, don't get discouraged if you if you get a little bit overwhelmed uh, with the process seek out advice, seek out people within the community or other business professionals that have done it before and um, utilize them and their knowledge. Well, wonderful. Well, then. So, so now let's move on to your, while you're very, you know, you've got a lot of experience with very small business, your speciality is like the, the larger business and maybe 25 um, employees and up. So obviously, you know, if you're thinking you've got to, you can go to those same resources if you're wanting to just find general information about, you know, different states. But I'm very interested in all the things that go into moving a much bigger business because there's way more things to think about. There's the people, there's the location, there's a, all of those things. So what are some of the things that, you know, that are absolutely critical if I was moving a company of say, let's say 25 to 50 people? Okay, great question. So one of the main things that we do here at Momentum Group is we do site selection consulting. That's basically the name of it. Um, and that is for larger companies, um, typically, like you had mentioned, the, the kind of the guideline uh, towards makes it more financially feasible is about 25 employees or more. Um, but we basically sit down and talk with the company um, and we determine what their ideal location factors are. So um, that could be geographic location. So obviously their distance from their suppliers, their customers. Uh, site specifics. So you'll hear a thing called Greenfield, which is basically just new construction. Um, or if they're looking for a specific type of building, um, transportation, proximity to transportation, whether that be road, river, rail, ports, airports, um, utility requirements. We discuss workforce, wages, benefits, uh, state and local taxes, which is a big deal. Uh, which is why we're finding a lot of people moving to the Southeast uh, because of state and local tax benefits, um, incentives that are provided by the communities. A lot of times we find that companies may move and start up, but, but they're leaving money on the table because they're unaware of incentives uh, for their business, both at the state and local level. So, um, and then another thing to, to kind of look for and that we look for is the overall cost of doing business. Um, depending upon your type of business, 
different states, um, your costs may be different. And then, and then one of the main things is just the overall quality of life. Um, you know, if you're, if you're going to put in the time and energy and, and really assume the risk, um, obviously the opportunity as well, uh, moving your business, um, the overall quality of life is extremely important, not just for you, but uh, for your employees as well. So we take those, those are just some of the key indicators, but we take um, all of those factors. And then essentially we determine with the company, we partner with them, determine a geographic area in which they would like for us to look. Um, then we solicit uh, proposals from communities within those or states and communities within the, that geographic area. And we ask them questions. So a lot of what we just talked about and also other things in great, great detail. Um, and essentially it allows us to act um, as kind of the face of the company to those communities and states and allows the company and the project to remain confidential. Uh, because if you're looking to relocate or even expand um, into a new state, you know, that's going to impact a lot of different parts of your company. And a lot of the times, you know, you don't want that word getting out until you're ready to go. So we kind of act as the face of the company. Um, and we have a specific process that we go through uh, to determine you know, what information we receive back on those proposals. We do uh, quantitative analysis on utility costs, uh, workforce and labor availability, um, and cost of workforce uh, and labor. We do a state and local tax uh, breakdown. So you can see what your tax liability may be or what your employee's tax liability may be, both on the state or local level. We uh, negotiate incentives on your behalf, um, state, local, or even with utility companies. So, and then we put all of that together and we determine kind of on the front end about how many different locations that you would like for us to bring back. Most of the time it's three to five. Uh, sometimes if it's a larger search, it could be up to 10 and then we narrow it down. It's kind of like a funnel, right? You start with a lot of different locations and then you end up with uh, one or two primary locations. Usually once we get to about three locations, um, we that's when the company becomes directly engaged and we'll go out on a site visit with the company. They'll get to meet with the local community. Um, they'll actually get to see the sites themselves. So essentially what we do is we do all of the legwork and we do all of the um, analyzing of all the important and key metrics uh, for your business's success. And really it's about risk reduction in the move and making sure that you're maximizing your opportunity by relocating or expanding into that new geographic area. Wow, you just made it sound like it's the easiest thing in the world to, <laughs> you, you know, you, you list all the things that you need and then you, tell, you know, come to you and you find the perfect location. And when you've got it down to those three, I just choose which one. <laughs> <laughs> right. I can, literally, if anyone's on the fence about moving their business from California, they shouldn't be anymore. <laughs> Well, the thing is, is, you know, site selection consultants, we act as kind of a concierge service, right? You tell us what you need, what's important to you in your business. And then we take that, we take the existing relationships that we have with states, local authorities, our knowledge of taxes, um, uh, or it could be any, you know, business restrictions, codes, permitting, that sort of thing. And we put all of that together in an easy to read document. Um, so it's, it is a very involved process on our side, but um, it really removes a lot of the stress from the business side and allows you to continue to focus on running your company um, while we're out essentially doing that legwork for the company themselves. And then we kind of bring back a short list and, and work from there. So yeah, it's a, the, the service, it's a, it's a very key service to provide and, 
And our job is to make you feel like, um, you know, it's going to be a much easier process by working through a site consultant than having to go out and do all of that on your own. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I, I have no questions to ask you now. <laughs> you covered, you literally covered everything. Um, and so, so which states do you cover when you say the Southeast? What, what kind of states do, does that include? So, you know, we primarily, now we do, we do locations all over the U.S. Uh, we do cover the entire U.S., but we primarily focus on uh, Texas, Arkansas, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, North and South Carolina. And then we also do Indiana as well. Um, it, part of that is just because of our knowledge of Indiana, but they also have a lot of good um, uh, business policy there as well. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a state that's growing and seeing a lot of investment. But throughout the entire Southeast right now, it is just on fire. I mean, um, Kentucky so far this year, you got to think for the state with about 4.3, 4.4 million people in the entire state. They've already announced over $10 billion in investments. Um, so, and with some of the largest companies in the world, like Ford Motor Company just announced a multi-billion dollar investment. Toyota is looking at a multi-billion dollar investment in the state. So there's a lot that's going on in the Southeast. It is very competitive, um, but there's a reason that you have a lot of businesses that are looking to relocate to the Southeast. And honestly, it's, it's very business friendly. You're gonna find great people. Um, you're gonna find pe not only people that are just great people, but a lot of times, especially in the more rural areas, um, you're going to find people with a great work ethic. And, and that's, that's key. You're going to find people that show up, that are loyal to your company, um, that are honest, you know, that are good communicators, uh, willing to work together, see the big picture. So I think a lot of that, couple that with the Southern charm, the weather that we have, um, you know, a lot of people are seeing that and saying, you know, I want to be a part of that. And it's, it's been proven time and time again that businesses, no matter what the type, can grow and be successful in the Southeast. And I, I would say uh, one other thing that I think a lot of people um, that are really surprised about the South is the connectivity. And with it, not just logistically through transportation, which it has a great, you know, uh, transportation infrastructure, but also through the internet. Um, I live in a town of 10,000 people. So I'm actually doing my business in a small rural community. Um, we have gigabit fiber at home, um, you know, and, and 10 gig, with up to 10 gig availability. There are a lot of gigabit cities uh, that are around. So as that continues to grow and is becoming more and more important, and you have people that are doing more and more remote work, um, especially those that just may be relocating to the Southeast, and choosing to work remotely, um, you know, that is one thing I think a lot of people are surprised of is the the uh, fiber infrastructure that we do have here in the Southeast. It's it's pretty impressive. We just actually, I don't know, about an hour and a half down the road a few years ago, Google announced a large data center. And, um, you know, there, if you look at it, it, just to kind of go toward the actual connectivity itself, Look at the data center announcements and you'll see several that have been in the southeast and obviously one of the main requirements of them is connectivity so that's what's keeping us moving forward over the next 10 20 30 years and that's something you should definitely take into consideration i i haven't thought about that until my teen son became obsessed with where data centers were <laughs> and and how much uh, wi-fi speed and things like that as long as as long as my Zoom doesn't cut out, that, <laughs> that's all I care about. <laughs> but that's I know right. that for, for business, you know, on a much bigger level, that, that is, like you say, absolutely critical. So. It, is. it is. I mean, you've got businesses that are doing VOIP phone systems, especially people that call in to place orders and, you know, just having Zoom calls like this, you know, with clients and customers and um, all that's all that's important. So you know, that, that is one kind of piece that had been lagging in the Southeast for a while, but 
that infrastructure is well built now and, and it's something that we're really proud of. Well, wonderful. Well, before we get on to how people can contact you, any anything else you want to, to add? I think I covered about all of it. I would just say, you know, we, we talked about a lot of different things. Um, the main thing is, is to not be so overwhelmed that you um, are frozen. <laughs> And, and it's, it's really just about writing things down, simplifying things as much as possible, um, and then utilizing the resources at your disposal. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, I know that sounds like it's oversimplified, but that really will get you started in the process. And then kind of once you get going, no pun intended with the name of my company, but you do start to build that momentum and that will help, um, help you kind of progress to where you want to be. I, I totally agree. So one of my favorite things to say is action creates momentum. You know, if you're just sitting there stressed and not knowing what to do, do something because it'll either work out and it'll propel you forward or it won't work and you'll try something else and you'll try something else. And there's times when I'm like, I don't want to do this. And then the moment I take that first step or, you know, for me and my business, I've had to learn a whole new industry and you only learn by taking that step and it either works and it propels you forward quickly or you it doesn't quite work and then you know you try something else and then that does work but I, I mean my experience is if there's a professional out there who can help you don't waste your time trying to figure it out yourself take that little bit of budget that you have and put it into expert advice because you'll waste so much time trying to figure it out yourself and if you can go to someone who knows what they're doing even if it costs you the the progress that you make the momentum that you gain is going to be so huge that it's it's worth that money so that's that's just my experience yeah yeah well i appreciate you saying that and and, and it's true it's true you don't need to be frozen in fear just take the first step forward and um, utilize your resources well perfect so if someone wants you to be their resource what is the best way to contact you well i, I did want to mention um, you know, we do offer a free consultation, you know, whenever you first contact us. So I'd love to hear from, from the folks that'll be uh, watching this and listening to this. But my contact information, my cell phone um, is 270-227-0841. And if I don't answer, please leave me a message and I will get back to you very soon. And my email is Ryan. That's R-Y-A-N at MomentumGroupKY.com. And you can also go to our website, MomentumGroupKY.com and click on business services. And you can see the variety of business services that we offer as well. Okay, you, you have a great website. That was the whole reason I contacted you. It's, it's <laughs> Sometimes you go on people's websites and they're so complex and you're like, what, what does this person do? How can they help me? Yours is laid out in the night, you know, the, the three steps. So you have an excellent website um, just for, re, you know, as a resource. But that's great to know that you do the free consultation. And then something I was thinking about, there are quite a lot of people in California who aren't making it quite as far as the Southeast. There's a lot of people who go to Washington State or maybe I, uh, Idaho. I know that maybe not be where you have as much experience, but you presumably could still help people with a consultation um, and help them in those states too. Absolutely, yeah. And we do we do site selection all across the United States. Um, I think I mentioned to you before we just did a project in Nevada earlier this year. So, yeah, I mean it, it's really the same structure as you work through um, the process. So, yeah, we're more than more than happy to help, even if it's just you know, a, a smaller company, one or two people that just need some advice, I'm more than happy to answer that call or return that email and help those folks out as well. Well, wonderful. So wherever you're watching this video, I'm going to link to all of Ryan's contact information and also the websites that he suggested at the beginning. Um, and I really appreciate everything. You, you've given us so much advice today, whether you're starting a small business or, you know, whether someone needs your help with a with a much bigger business. Um, I think you've made the, the process so it's so clear and so straightforward. And I know it's much more complex than that. But when you when you can see the big picture, when you understand the process, it's much easier to take that first step. And and so thank you. I very much appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time, Allison. And um, 
you know, I really appreciate everybody that'll be watching this and uh, certainly want to encourage you all definitely don't be afraid to take the first step. Like I said, take the first step, utilize your resources. That's what they're there for. And they're happy and more than willing to help. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you.